Father God, we thank you this morning just for the opportunity to come and to yes. share the word of God with your people. We thank you, Father, that they are good ground about to receive a good word. And that, Father, even as we purpose in our heart, put the word of God into practice, mm -hmm. that, Father, we declare that our lives should never be the same again. We thank you for the spirit of God being here to offer insight and revelation. We thank you that that word shall be imparted into our hearts, Father God, that we'll not be just simply hearers, but we'll be doers of the word that we hear. We declare today, Father, that we love you. We love you not only with our words, but, Lord, we love you with our lives. And so we just praise you, we honor you for what you're going to do through this word today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Well, it's good to see everybody again. And it's always a blessing to be in the house of God. And always awesome to just know that God is still good. He's still on the throne. Praise amen. God. Amen. amen. That's one, two amens. But he's, he really is still on the throne. <laughs> I mean, he didn't get off. He's still on there. Amen. We have been uh, sharing with you a series entitled Walking in the Rest of the Lord. This is uh, the, the sixth session of this. And again, the thing that we've been dealing with that we are living in a time where people are so, in such unrest today. You know, there's so much turmoil uh, going on in people's lives. You know, I was thinking about on my job and how I think in, in one week we lost like five people. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh my goodness, what's going on, you know? And uh, to such a degree, we were losing people so quickly. One of the guys said, Donald, you need to come over here and pray over this place. Yes, yeah. we, do, we do, praise God. Amen. And uh, so I tell them, yes, we, we definitely need to be praying, praise God. Uh, so because we've been sharing on rest, uh, one of the things that, that I wanted to make sure that uh, we understand is that God intended for his people to be in rest. Amen. He never intended for us to, to get caught up in the affairs of the world whereby we lose our joy. We lose our peace. Come on, amen. He never intended for us to, to, to be like the world, get caught in the society, society's issues. Uh, just because the world cares about something don't mean you're called to care about it in the way they do. The Bible says, in fact, of the believer that we're to cast all our cares upon him all right. because he what cares for us. So if he, didn't, if he wanted us to care, then he should have asked us to cast our care. So when people say, well, you just don't care, not my job to care. My job is to be obedient, Amen. not to care. Mm -hmm. I, listen, I can love somebody and not necessarily have feelings of caring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can be obedient. Am I making your head twitch? <laughs> Amen. Good. Amen. Let me challenge you this morning. Because think about it. I, I, for instance, if, 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 if I'm at the grocery store and the Lord says, I want you to pay for her groceries, I don't have to feel anything. Mm -hmm. I just have to be obedient. All right. Why? Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. So I'm no longer doing what I want to do. I'm doing what he wants me to do. Oh, so that means every aspect of my life is set aside for him to use it as he sees fit. I mean, it's like, like the instrument. The instrument the instrument does not have an opinion about what it plays. Come on. It simply yields to the, the master musician, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to just yield to the master. <laughs> and he can play us any way he wants. He can play with any tune he wants. Come on, amen. Do whatever you want to do. But we're supposed to give ourselves to him. All right. Amen. Just as Jesus gave himself to the Father's will, we give ourselves to his will. Mm -hmm. So we've been dealing with this issue of rest. And, and, and one of the things the Lord began to kind of deal with my heart about is that if, if people, if my people are going to live in rest, they have to walk in truth. <coughs> and so, you know, then the question became, well, what is truth? Right? Because that's, that's the big issue today. What is truth? Now, so I, I looked at some statistics of, about just, just Christianity. Now, within Christianity alone, there are 43,000 different denominations within Christianity. Wow. Within Christianity, 43,000 different denominations within it. That means everybody has a perception of what they perceive truth is. Mm -hmm. Right? And every last one will tell you they're right. <laughs> or they would have started their own. Right? Now, that's just in Christianity. The number of religions today, it is estimated that the number of religions that exist in the world today is about 4,200. About 4,200 different religions in the world today. And I guarantee you, they will tell you the same. They have the truth. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody has truth. No. And so then the question then becomes, what is truth? Because if you don't know what truth is, then you can easily be persuaded by anything that sounds better than what you got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that right, though, isn't it? It's very easy to be persuaded. And so the Lord asked me this question, Don, what is true? Well, you know, we know the word, what well, the word is true, you know, that word is true, you know. Uh, 
But he, he began to break this down to me and began to explain to me that truth is not a belief system. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a second. Truth is not a belief. I'll just let that marinate for a minute. Say it again. <laughs> truth is not a belief. And it marinate. Because think about that. If truth was a belief, then why do you have 43,000 different denominations within the Christian faith? When everybody's got something different that they believe. Oh, got some pre trib, post trib, <laughs> later on trib. They got all kind of tribulation people. You got all different ideas about tithing. Some say tithing passed away with the law, others say tithing is for days. Some people say we're not under tithing at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you got to different beliefs. Mm -hmm. And they all believe, perceive they have the truth. So, how do we maneuver all that? That's an honest question, though. How do we maneuver all of this stuff that people perceive? I mean, the Muslim will tell you they have the truth. Mm -hmm. Buddha is the truth. Gandhi had the truth. So much truth that, that people say perceive as truth. Because, because all this truth is based upon what? A belief system. Mm -hmm. Taking you somewhere, y'all just stay in the boat. I'm making you think real good this morning. All right. So that's what the Lord asked me, what, what is truth? And he, so he said, he said, Donald, truth is not a belief system. Truth is a person. Mm -hmm. Amen. Woo, I said, Amen. Let, that, let that marinate for a minute. He said, truth is not a belief, it's a person. Come you know on. why? Because your beliefs change. Come on. Even in Christianity. There, I mean, if I, if I ask you about show hand, how many of you can honestly say, compared to, let's say, five years ago to compare to where you are now, that what you believe five years ago has changed since what you believe since today. Mm -hmm. It's changed, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. So your belief system changed. Mm -hmm. right. Ain't that a hoot? <laughs> it changes. And so, so then if, if we're going to know what truth is, we need a truth, a truth that never changes. Amen. That is the same yesterday, All right. today, yeah. and forever. Come on. So we so then because that's what truth is. Truth doesn't change from day to day or from revelation to revelation. Truth don't change. Truth has to remain absolutely the same or it's not the truth. Same. Same. We can gain deeper insight and perspectives about the truth, but the truth itself never changes. Come on. And so I, I understood why God said <laughs> that truth is not a belief system, because our belief system is always growing. In our understanding of who Jesus is. <laughs> now, you say, well, why is that so important? Why is that so relevant that, that we understand that Jesus is a truth? Now, let me, let me break that down. We're not saying that Jesus possessed this truth. Because if you possess something, it is subject to change. He does not possess truth. He is truth. Come on. He is the source of truth. In fact, he is so much truth that if truth said elephants fly, guess what? All elephants go start flying. <laughs> he is absolute in truth. Come on, he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, Thank and you, everything Lord. in the Thank middle. You, Lord. Amen. I am the Lord God, and I change not. Amen. Amen. But if you read the Old Testament, the Old Testament makes God look different than the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? And they all just said, God was just killing everybody. God was killing everybody. <laughs> he was killing. But he said, no, that wasn't me. But I couldn't tell you about spiritual warfare. Come on. Because he wasn't born again. Come on. There's a lot of things that are attributed to God in the Old Testament that when it was, the Bible was trans, translated, it was, it, it was always translated the same way that God did. Mm -hmm. You see, God did in the Old Testament. A lot of them, God did this and God did that. And, well, God, there's two wills of God. There's his perfect will. But then there's also his permissive will. Amen. There are certain things in it oh, that God had to permit, listen, because of the depth of sin. Amen. Come on. I mean, for instance, if you get cancer, you don't just clip, you don't just, you know, you got cancer this big, you don't cost a little quarter of it, do you? Mm -hmm. No, you get it all taken out. So, and that's how God had to function, because there was no, there, there was no salvation. Come on. So when sin cropped up, God had to wipe it out, because it was, it was like cancer, it was going to spread. So if you don't take all of it out, guess what? It's going to spread like cancer. It's going to go Amen. to other places. Amen. So God said, I didn't change. But what did change is your perception of me changed. Mm -hmm. what, what did Jesus say when he came? He said, I have come to reveal the Father to you. Mm -hmm. why, did they, why did the Pharisees dislike Jesus? 
He said, because they disliked him because he said, you make yourself to be a son of God. And nobody, they, they didn't feel like nobody was able and deserving of that title. Mm -hmm. Am I helping you? Am I making you think real good this morning? I want to make you think this morning. Because if we, don't, if, we don't, if we don't conclude what truth is, we will get caught up in the waves of this world and the things that are swirling about, and we will get in unrest, and then we'll start looking for another truth that will satisfy how we feel. Mm -hmm. so, so, he, he, so the Lord points out, that Jesus is true. Not, he does not possess truth. He is true. But the problem is, though he is, is true, our perception of him is not one who is true. He, we, we perceive him as one possessing truth. Mm. Now go to, go to John, the Gospel of John. Real quick. John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and... Uh, very familiar verse of scriptures. And, uh, and we'll look at verse number 14. Now, we you know John 1, 1, talking about in, in the beginning was the Word, the Word, uh, mm -hmm. the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father. Now, look at John chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 14. And it says, The Word became human mm -hmm. and lived among us, and we saw his glory. It was the glory that the Father shared with his only Son, a glory full of kindness and truth. Now, the King James says, uh, let me read it from the King James. John, 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 John. James, John chapter 1, verse 14 says it this way. It says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It says, we beheld him as. In other words, it's, it's showing you that you had a perception of him. That when he was full of grace and truth, but we did not see him as being. He is grace and he is truth. He is not one who possesses grace. He is not one that possesses truth. He is grace. He is truth. Say that. That is a totally different perception. Now, now, why is that so key? So that if he is truth, when I need to understand something, I go to truth. And I'm not going to him to get his perception of truth. Mm. All right, now. I'm going so that truth can illuminate my mind so I can understand truth from truth's perspective. Come on. For instance, some people have the idea that, you know, we're all just sinners saved by grace. We all sinners saved by grace. We sinners, sinners. Right? We have that perception, don't we? You know, and you hear people preach. We're just all sinners. All sinners. 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 Every last. We're just sinners. No, we were sinners. Mm -hmm. But when we came to Jesus, we now became new creations. There you go. Praise God. <laughs> but see, if you're not, remember we talk about don't allow other people's facts mm -hmm. to become your truth? Mm -hmm. See, so when you have all these different religions and, and perceptions, if you don't learn how to go to the source of what truth is, those religions will deceive you. I know many people that have strayed from the faith because people taught them things in their religion mm. that did not line up with the word, mm. but they believed it anyway because they was in it so long, and they were more concerned about justifying their denominational belief mm. than they were going to the truth. Say that. I know many people quit God because their religion told them, well, you, you sin too bad, get saved. Mm. That's not truth. Mm. All right. Now, now, let's talk about, look at first, look at first John. And again, I, I, yeah, I want us to have a good understanding of what the Bible says about truth. First John, chapter 1. Get this, amen. Amen. Look, look at uh, starting verse, verse number, verse number one. Is it that which was from the beginning? Now look how far he takes this. That which was from what? The beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, 
and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus. Amen. So, so who's your fellowship supposed to be with? The, with the Father and the Son. Now, why do you want to fellowship with the Son? Because the Son reveals God to you. If they, if they knew God in the Old Testament, then why did Jesus need to come to reveal it? Jesus said this. He said, I can only do what I've seen the Father do. Well, when did Jesus see him do what he did? From the beginning all the way up to the point he came to the world. Mm -hmm. So then, did Jesus ever burn anybody's house down? Did Jesus ever break anybody's leg? Did Jesus ever come put cast on folk? No, 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 no. In fact, if you read the Old Testament, God looks like he's kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, give you a good, good, good little instance. Remember the, Remember the situation where the, the children of God disobeyed God, and the Bible says God sent serpents into the camp to bite the, bite the people, mm -hmm. but then God told Moses to make a serpent, the bronze serpent, put it in the middle of the camp. Anybody look at the bronze serpent live? Mm -hmm. Now, wait, wait a minute, hold up, God. <laughs> you, go, you go kill them, but then you go heal them. You go put them in trouble, but then give them a way out of the trouble. <laughs> Boy, that seems kind of real. That, that God's dyslexic. <laughs> I mean, seriously. But when you read in a different translation, they said that God permitted serpents into the camp. Why? Because of their disobedience. In other words, God said, as long as you are willing to stay with me, I will be your shield and I will be your defense. The minute you decide to do your own thing, guess what? I can no longer be your shield because you have chosen to follow somebody else. Say that. But in my grace, I'm going to have my man Moses make a serpent. So if y'all get bit by these things, you can look at the serpent, that bronze serpent, and you'll live. What was that bronze serpent represent? That they could come back to God. But if you just read it the way it's written, you will, you will have this idea of God that is so convoluted and so, that God just killed everybody. You said, they, they said, no, there was more wars thought over religion than anything. But you don't understand Jesus, then you don't understand truth. Mm -hmm. See, truth never came to give us more religion. <laughs> People say, well, what religion are you? I'm not. They didn't look at me and say, well, you're a pastor. Yeah, and I'm not religious. Pretty I'm, good. I'm, I'm not religious at all, man. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. See, people, people, see, we, 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 we categorize things with religion. Like, well, you go to church on Sunday, yeah. I said, if you, had a, if you have a wife, if you, have, if, you, if you establish a date night every Friday night, uh, does that mean you have a religion? Do you do it all the time? No, you have a relationship. But you understand the necessity of coming together for the betterment of the relationship. Mm -hmm. So we're not coming here for, I, I pray to God you're not coming here for any religious belief. I pray you're coming in for the fellowship that we have with God the Father and the Son and so that we can fellowship with one with another. All right. Amen. Not about religion. That's why we don't necessarily, we're so locked into some way of doing service where we can't change it up sometimes. Please. Why? Because, because it's not about religion. I don't like religion. But do you know the, the biggest opponents Jesus had in his day? Was the religious people, oh, yeah. the Pharisees, oh, yeah. Sadducees. Big right. time. Right. God didn't God call us religion. He calls us a relationship. Mm. If God wanted religion, guess what? He didn't need to send Jesus. He had plenty going on that day. Mm. He sent Jesus to bring us back to that place where we could be family. Mm. I, that's why I don't get why people get upset because people leave church. I, I don't get that. <laughs> He's still family. <laughs> Amen. Wherever you go, you still family. When Amen. I see you, you're going to be family. I don't care if you go back to a Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, whatever. We family. Mm -hmm. we, it don't change. You, you can't get this on me because I'm your family. Mm -hmm. And when I see you out in public, I'm going to still speak to you, be kind to you, love on you. I pray your walk with God is going well. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you succeed, I succeed. All right, man. I don't have to be, I don't have to be in the same field with you to, mm -hmm. to want you to be successful in the Lord because we family. Amen. Amen. It, it is foolishness to think that. That people get offended because people, I mean, I've, I've talked to people, they say, you know, I left my church. I saw one of them in the they turned their back on me and turned their head and walked. I'm like, really? Get out of it. What, what is that? It's religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a revelation of truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus, 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 and Jesus, in his high priestly prayer, he prayed, Father, make them one. John 16, yes. you want to read it? Yes. John 16. He says, Father, make them one, even as you and I are one. one. You didn't, see, you didn't see Jesus and God at odds with one another just because Jesus was down here and the Father was up there? You can say that, man. But Father, you love me, I ain't speaking to you. You didn't do that. 
But isn't that amazing that, that we, we have these belief systems that isn't even associated with the truth, which All is right. Jesus? All right. You know, Jesus wouldn't act, let, let you act like that. Come on. Come on. He, he would never let you let, But what happened? People start going back to Jesus, and they start going back to their religious beliefs. Mm. Or they lean towards their own human intellect, their feelings, the flesh. Mm. But, but really what God called us to is, is really to come to Jesus. In every aspect of our life, we are called to come to him. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. We can't even, listen, here's the truth. In the, in the body of Christ, we can't even have effective fellowship if you're, one person, if you're a person that's not fellowshipping with the, the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I am. Mm -hmm. There are people within the church, within the body of Christ, that I'm like, I, we can't hang out. Mm -hmm. you say that. I love you, but man, you got some stuff going on that I, I can't get in agreement with, and it don't line up with the Lord. But I love you. And when I see you, I greet you as a brother. I'll hug you, love you, but if you ain't willing to get in line with the truth, and I'm not talking about my truth. I'm not talking about my religious truth. I'm talking about the truth that Jesus himself has established. That's very clear. I'm like, I can't. I, can't. I love you, but I can't. All right. And I don't mean I'm, it, 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 and it don't mean I'm mad at him. In fact, I'm very hurt because I, I want to fellowship with you. Mm -hmm. I want to spend time with you. But because a person doesn't align themselves with the truth, I, I can't. Because, because even though you're in the family, you made yourself a black sheep of the family. Mm -hmm. Y'all know y'all got some family members that black mm -hmm. sheep. Uh, <laughs> Stop looking at each other. Stop looking at each other. We're not talking about people. There are people out there in the world. Don't look at people in church. But isn't that true? We all got black, but they still family. But you can't, you can't bring, bring, you can't bring the Uncle George to the house because he'll drink up everything and keep on drinking, <laughs> bring his own drink. You like, oh, Uncle George can't bring, invite Uncle George can't come to the the family. You can't bring Uncle George. <laughs> Cause Uncle George don't know how to control himself. <laughs> Does that mean you don't love him? No, you want Uncle George to be there. But Uncle George has to understand that if you go come to the house, there has there's conditions, Uncle George. Amen. You can't be bringing your own brown bag. They, 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 they ain't working Uncle George. You can't be spiking the punch. I mean, the kids like it. That's what I would love, Uncle George. You gotta get out. Right? So you understand that there's some truth that we have to align ourselves with so that we can have fellowship. Because our fellowship isn't just with one another. It's with the Father and the Son. And if I'm doing something that doesn't line up with the Father and the Son, then this guess what? I can't have fellowship with people who do want to do what he says. Amen. Amen. But that's not me. I mean, at least I'm nicer to do it. I'm saying nicer than Paul. They Paul said, put them out. He did say, put them out of church. Mess people up. He said, now if they repent, receive them back. But they don't repent, leave them out there. Let, 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 let their body be destroyed, but hey, God will still have their spirits. Mm. Amen. Could, but you what? Because you can't let cancer linger. Mm. You can't be patting cancer. Come you can't on. be coddling cancer. Mm. You gotta cut it out. And, it don't, it is, and you can do all that without being hateful, being mean, being spiteful. Because they, right, the man. intent is always to bring what? Wholeness, wellness, and restoration back to a person's life. Jesus. But let me tell you something, people. People will not change their behavior if you condone their wrong. Mm. Why should they change? You condone it. Mm. All right. Let me get back to my point here. All right. Now, so we said that truth is not a belief. Truth is a person. Without this person of truth, we will never come to the true revelation of the truth. In other words, what, now think about this. They didn't have Bibles. Let's just dismiss that for a minute. They didn't have Bibles. Come on. They didn't have 1st and 2nd John. Right? They didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, mm -hmm. Ephesians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. They didn't have that. But what they did have was well, they had a relationship with the truth. His name was Jesus. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Bible, they had such a relationship with Jesus that the Bible said the people took note of them that they had been with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have a Bible. But now, now we, we are a little better because we pray that we got a Bible. But the problem with us today, we rely solely on the Bible mm. without having a relationship with the truth. Mm. See. Do you know how easily it is to misinterpret something in the Word without the truth there to help yes. you explain it to you? Yes. yes. So what we got to do, people do, is sit down with the Bible and they read it and they memorize some verses and then they, they put their own religious twist on it, their denominational twist on it, you know, and then they, and then they go out and teach people that stuff. Mm. But you got to have a relationship with the truth so that the truth can sit down let me, and say, let me explain that to you before you run off the half cocked with this thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because you're really, you're really kind of leading, you're reading his mind, but here's the thing. 
when you're in somebody else's head, you better have them there to explain what's going on in their head because you can very easily misinterpret what they're thinking. Yeah. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. If you got in my head, you're like, oh my God, what's, what's going on in that pastor's head? You, you, you're going to need me to explain it to you. Mm -hmm. Where when you read the Bible, you're reading his mind. You're reading the way he perceives things. But here's the thing. You can always get a wrong perception if you don't have him to explain it to you. Amen. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to send you the comfort, which is the Holy Spirit. Yes. And he'll lead and guide you to what? Yes. All yes. truth. Yes. You know what he really does? He takes you back to Jesus. Yes. Look, look at it. This is. Uh, so in 1 John 14, we read this. It says in John chapter 4. Chapter 1, verse 14 says, we, let me read it again. It says, the word became human and lived among us. We saw his glory. It was the glory that the Father shares with his only Son, a glory full of kindness and truth. And we said that if Jesus is simply seen as having truth, we can easily be persuaded to find others who may have perceived, who we may perceive as having a truth as well. And that's happened to people. Mm -hmm. You know, people want some new different message. They want something a little deeper. You know, but that ain't deep enough for them. And they run somewhere else and try to get, and it just gets them all. You, you always got to go back to Christ. Whenever you're reading the word, make, invite the Lord in. Mm -hmm. Lord, help me understand this. Mm -hmm. Help me not lean to my own understanding. Because, you know, the Lord, the, the Lord chastised me one day. I was reading the word, and he said, don't. And I, and I was reading it with Psalms 37. And it says, delight thyself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And, and, the, Lord, and, the, and the Holy Spirit just checked me. He said, don't you ever think you know what something means? Mm -hmm. He said, go look it up. Okay, my bad. So I went and I went and looked it up. And that word delight didn't mean anything that I thought it meant. Because in our English language, when we say the word delight, we immediately go back to emotions, don't we? Mm -hmm. We think of feelings and woo, -woo yeah. You know, we think and, 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 and that word has that is it is the most unemotional word that you can find. It, mean, it means to be soft and pliable. The word pliable means readily yielding. Mm. So when he says delight in God, what he's really saying to us is to be soft and pliable, readily yielding to the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Meaning, regardless of how I feel, there you go. I need to be yielded to him. And as, as I show him that I'm willing to be yielded to him, then he said, when I can trust you to yield to me, I don't mind blessing you. But I can't bless you when you're not yielded. Mm. Because if I gave you something and you're not yielded, you're going to use it for your own cause. Mm. And so, so that totally changed my perspective. What happened? Why did my perspective change? Because truth showed up yeah, and spoke to me. Mm. Amen. He spoke to me and said that, that, that you, you are not understanding that correctly. And there have been many times, there have been many times I've been reading other translations of the Bible and have been reading something, and in my spirit I get a check about, you know, that something was off. Uh -huh. And so then when I get another translation, I find that they had omitted an entirely different, an, an entire verse was gone. They took a whole verse out and mm. it totally re, redefined the whole meaning of that chapter by taking that one verse out. Mm. But why did I know that? Because not well, because I was smart? No. It was because the truth showed up and began to reveal to me there are things missing. That's why, listen, that's why you need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Apart from just reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. But you need to read the Bible, but you need to read the Bible with Jesus present. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. You, you, need, you need to, because if you don't, you're going to get a lot of misinterpretation. And it's very easy to do. Because how many, time, how many times over the years have, have, if any of you are like me, you come out of religious church backgrounds, you know, and everything was hooping and hollering and yelling, and, you know, and, you know, ain't he all right early Sunday morning, he got up, you know, and you, you come out of the background and you, you, you start coming into the Word of God. You have a, a tendency to transplant those experiences onto the Word when you read it. And so, or something, when you don't understand it, you just bypass it. Oh, well, they didn't teach that back then, keep it moving. Mm. And we never learned that this is about a relationship mm. with him to where we stop and begin to hear what he is saying about these verses in the Bible. You've got to have the truth. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about the truth. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus said that I have come, he came to restore the fellowship between God and man. Mm. Not religion. He came to restore your fellowship. It's an amazing today that people don't know God. Been in church for 50 years, don't know God. Mm. I, I 
I talked to I talked to a man one time, pastor, and he was like, and I was telling him the things the Lord was telling me. He was like, God talked to you. Hmm. I'm thinking you've been pastoring what thirty years, <laughs> and you're asking me that if God really talks. Now, if, if the leader not hearing God, mm -hmm. what is he giving the sheep? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. See, we we we. We, we get to a point, y'all, and y'all forgive me, but sometimes we think we're so small. We think because we got degrees on the wall that says you're a doctor. Because we got, that, that, that we think that makes us smarter than the truth. Never. <laughs> you know God, in the Bible, God always used people that, that, seemed, that, that was unqualified. Uh -huh. He did. The Bible said he takes those things that are despised and rejected of men, and he uses those things to bring glory to his name. Amen. Amen. The Bible said he took note of the disciples that they were unlearned and uneducated. Uh -oh. But God used them. Why? Because one thing about being dumb, you, you're dumb enough to know you, you're not small. <laughs> Amen. And, you, and you can lean on somebody else's wisdom because you know you're not that small. Amen. Now, now, if you got all that on your wall, praise God, thank God for it, but don't put your confidence in it. All right. Amen. If you, if you got an education, nothing wrong with having an education. Don't, don't walk out that path. Don't believe in education. He wants to be done. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, don't lean on that stuff. Amen. Yeah. One, one house fire solved that whole problem. Yeah. <laughs> all your people like, but put your confidence in truth. There you go. Let Jesus guide you. You know, we used to sing songs back in the day. You know, he walks with me and he talks with me. He tells me I'm his own. We, you, know, you know, yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but do you listen to him? Mm -hmm. Every day, every hour every second. Do you let him be Lord? Look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm going to give you some verses. You will, you will jump around for a minute here. John chapter 14 verse 6. It says, Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except, what? Through me. So no matter what any other religion says about getting to God, Jesus says, there's only one way to him. Amen. And that is through the truth. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Which means there ain't another one. There, there isn't another one. Right? So, so if, if, if we really believe this, then anytime I need to know something, I go back to the truth. Mm. When I need to know something about the way I need to go in, guess what I do? I go back to the way. When I need to understand about life and how to live life, I go back to the life. I don't go to other things. I don't go to, you know, some people know when they get stressed and they had a rough day at work, the first thing they do when they get home, they want to pop open the bottle and, you know, pour themselves a drink and, because of the day, hold up. No, when, when, when life has beat you down, you need to experience with life to be renewed so you go back to life. <laughs> you don't go to the bottle. <laughs> Just grunt real good for me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no, people do that. People get stressed, they go, they go drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They go smoke. I mean, I used to work with people, they said, he feels stressing me out. I said, I smoke. I need a smoke break. He's stressing me out. No. <laughs> Great, go, go give yourself lung cancer. Yeah, that, that's going to solve all your problems. Say that, man. No, we, listen, when we get stressed out, we go back to the truth. Mm. Jesus, I'm, I'm having a rough day. Mm. I need some grace to help. Yes. Yes, indeed. Because he, 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 is, he is full of grace and truth. Yes. Not that, it's, not that he possesses it, he is it. Yes. <laughs> All right, look at, look at John chapter, go down, uh, uh, look at, go down to verse 12. John 14, 12. Now see, this is why the truth should bring you some comfort. This is why truth should bring you comfort. John 14, 12 says this. He says, I can guarantee this truth. In other words, take it to the bank. Those who believe in me will do the things that I am doing. They will do even greater things because I am going to the Father. Amen. 
Yes. Verse 13 says, I will do anything you ask the Father in my name mm. so that the Father will be given glory because of the Son. Amen. He said, I'm not trying to bless you for you. I'm trying to bless you to bring glory to his name. Amen. Amen. He said, well, yeah, whatever you ask the Father in my name. Glory. Now, here's the thing. How do I know what to ask for? Because mm. most folks don't know what to ask for. Mm. See, you, 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 so if I go back to the truth, the truth would tell me, no, don't, your problem isn't money. Your problem is management. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, don't tell me that. I just need more money. No, you need, you need better management skills. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want to hear that. No, that, but that's the truth. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you can be honest with yourself. And not, don't raise your hand. But you can be honest with yourself and say, you know what? There is some financial trouble I'm in because I just made some real bad decisions. Uh -huh. I just made some bad, I just made bad decisions. Come on, come on. Because I didn't have the truth directed me. Because he, <laughs> look at John, John chapter 8, John chapter 8, I'm, I'm trying to get through this, John chapter 8 verse 32, John chapter 8 verse 32, I'm bouncing around, I'm going to bounce back to John 14, so you just keep your fingers there, uh, but John 8 32 says this, he says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Why you fighting to get free? When the truth says, I will make you free. So show up at the truth. And the truth said, I'll set you free. We've been trying to get free on five-step program, ten-step program, come on, amen. And the truth said, no, just come to me, I'll set you free. If you get to know me, you'll get free. Have you noticed the more you get to know about Jesus and understand the, 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 the less your load becomes in your life? Like, man, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Mm -hmm. now, did, you do, did you take a five-step program, ten-step program, pop a pill? No. You, you know, you, what did you do? You start learning about the truth. Mm -hmm. And you will know, listen, not know about it. That's religion. But you will know the truth. All right. In other words, it's personal, it's intimate. You go, Jesus said, you will know me. And when you know me, I'm going to set you free. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. People want to be free, but they don't want to know him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, isn't that true that people want to be free, but they don't want the truth. But they don't understand. The only the truth can make you free. Amen. So if you don't get the truth, you won't get free. And the freedom you get will really be bondage oh. without the truth. I said a lot in that little statement. I really did. That's why you go back and listen to stuff. He says, but you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Lord. Here's the thing. The more you get to know Jesus, the more free you become. Mm. See, now, now listen. When I say know Jesus, I'm not talking about knowing about Jesus. I'm talking about know him. I got, I get, and I got to give you, give me, give me a, come on, brother. I'm going to let you help me because Jesus went back in the back. I'm going to show you free. I'm going to show you what freedom's like. All right. You, you just stand behind me there. All right. Just hold on to my coattail. Now, freedom is, for us as believers is simply, I'm Jesus, and he Larry, and every need of his life, he just keeps walking with me. Now, what did I say we do last week? We're going, where are we going? 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 You don't even know where you're going. You don't need to, listen, you don't need to know where you're going. You know why you don't need to know? Because you'll talk yourself out of it. <laughs> you know why? Because he, you'll see me walking, and we'll be going through the valley, and you, you think that the valley is going to make you stop. Mm. Jesus, now don't look at the valley. Just look at me. Just keep following me. Keep walking with me. See, we already through the valley. Did you see, did you, what, what, you know, there are things you've gone through in your life that you got over. You didn't know you got through it. Amen. Why? Because you were keeping your eyes fixed on him. Thank you, Lord. I will keep him in perfect peace whose eyes, whose mind is stayed on me. Why? Because he trusts in me. Amen. See, to know the truth is to find trust. Amen. And most of us, we, we, we want to trust God, but we want to trust God under our terms. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'll trust you as long as I can make out my plan, do my thing, and you bless it. And I, then I know I can trust you. And, and the truth is, no, you need to trust me that I have a plan laid out for your life. And that if you trust me and follow me, I'll get you to a, the promise that I've made you. Mm -hmm. We don't like that because what if it don't end up where I want to be? You don't understand. Where you want to be will lead to your death. Mm -hmm. How many people got what they want and it killed them? 
city. I just want to be a successful uh, executive of a multi-million dollar company. Now you, now you got the job, you're jumping out windows because you can't take too much stress. Because you got it in your strength. Listen, anything you get in your strength is going to require your strength to keep it. And guess what? Your strength is finite. But his strength is infinite. But his infinite strength is only available to you when you're letting him lead. If you if you break in today under the stress and pressures of life, yes. whose who's, who's strength are you walking in? Yours or his? Because he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if you're not light and it's not easy, now see, now listen, easy don't mean it's not busy in the sense that you got to do work. But in doing the work because the truth is there, his infinite strength is keeping you. I found, I, found out this, I found out this, life is real easy when I just trust him. Mm. But here's the thing, y'all, you can't trust somebody you don't know. Mm. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. You can't trust somebody you don't know. If you don't know him, you can't trust him. Mm. It's impossible to trust him you don't know who he is. I mean, I say walking to a stranger, say, here's my paycheck, here's my account, I'm going to make this deposit for me. You don't know him. You're not going to do that. Mm. But, but how can we trust Jesus to really handle our life when we haven't taken the time to get to know that he's trustworthy. All right. He's the truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Go to John 14, 16. This is the last verse I'm going to give you. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Ain't it tough? Mm -hmm. Amen. See, this is what the truth says about himself. He says, verse, John 14, verse 16. He says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper who yes. will be with you for how long? Forever. Okay, let me, somebody, somebody ask, a, ask a question for me. How long is forever? Forever. Okay, when does forever end? It does ever. So that means even beyond this life, yes. your helper go be with you forever. Amen. Now, when, when it, it says that he, when he says, I'm going to give you another, that word another means I'm going to send you somebody who's an exact copy of that's me. That's right. Amen. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to send you somebody that's just like me who will be with you forever. Now, the disciples were crying about the fact that Jesus was going to leave them. But he's trying to encourage them and say, look, it's better for me to leave you because if I don't leave you, then the, uh, the other won't come who's just like me. The only difference is I'm limited. I can be at one place at one time, but he can be everywhere all the time, 24-7, 365 days. He never sleeps and he never slumbers. That means my infinite power is always available to you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Woo. Amen. Now look at this. There it is. Ver verse 17. That helper is the spirit of truth. <laughs> Glory, come on. Jesus said, I, I got an extension between you and me. See, see, I'm going to go back and I'm going to sit down on this throne till the Father tells me I can come and conquer. But in the meantime, you're going to have a connection with me called the Spirit of Truth, Lord. which is just another me in the earth with you. Why won't you listen to him? What's keeping you from listening to that voice? The voice of those that says, forgive, don't mm. hold a grudge. What, what, where is it? And forgiveness don't mean you're a doormat. That's right. Amen. It don't mean you're a doormat. It don't mean you let people wipe their feet all over you. Mm -hmm. It's not what forgiveness means. Amen. I, I, I had enough time I go to another study about forgiveness. But, but, but they don't mean that. Because you're not a doormat, praise God. You're, you're valuable. You're a precious jewel to God. Yeah. You're a doormat. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But look at this here. That the helper, is, that helper is the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him. Because it doesn't see or know him. Why? Because in order to understand, listen, for, uh, in order to understand the spirit of truth, you got to know the source of the truth. Yes. Yes. That truth is. See, we know Jesus. We not only not only do we get to read about His life in the in the in the Word of God, but He walks with us. Yes. And He is. talks with us. Yes. He speaks with us by His Spirit. And and, and the thing I love about the Holy Spirit, y'all, that when He speaks concerning you, He's only speaking what He heard. Mm -hmm. 
He's only speaking to you what he heard heaven say about you. That's right. So when you're going through a hard time and you hear that little voice says you're going to make it, it's not just to encourage you. It's a fact. It's a guarantee that if you stick with me, I know you're going through a hard time. But trust me, when you hear that voice, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Amen. And he's not just saying that to make you feel good. He's telling you what the, the truth said about you in heaven. Mm. The truth, who is who is so confident in his truth that he is just seated down on his throne. <laughs> just wait mm -hmm. for the Father to give the word. Go get my kids. Mm -hmm. That's all he's waiting for. But that truth is, is connected to each other by the Spirit of God. Glory. Glory. This is the way he says. Uh, the world cannot accept him because it does not see or know him. Mm -hmm. You know him because he lives with you. And will be in you. Yeah, it is. Ooh, glory to God. Yeah, it is. Now, 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 this is. He said, "I will not leave you all alone. I will come back to you." How did he come back to him? By the Spirit. Amen. The Spirit of Truth. That another that's just like Jesus. Praise God. Glory. Come on, you're not you're not alone glory. in this. Glory. You're not by yourself in this. Glory. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You why? Because the Spirit of Truth. Who possesses the infinite power of God lives and abides on the inside mm. of you. That is. But you got listen, you gotta develop your relationship with the Lord. Yeah. I'm not talking about religion. Come now, on. do you need to go to church? But you need to go to church when you're getting the word of God. Amen. When you're getting taught, amen, when the word of God is challenging you. You, you need times to serve where it makes your head go, hmm. Mm -hmm. You need those times. Because if it's just if it's just blah blah, blah what you used to, yeah, amen, amen. You need you're not getting challenged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. It's kind, of, it's kind of like, you know, I give y'all that example, that info commercial, the one that says, lose weight by not working out. Mm -hmm. And she's going to say, what? <laughs> you remember that? Y'all remember, remember that commercial? And you know, you do the same thing, like, what? Yeah. Well, no, let, let me tell you, you, you got to work out. I don't care what that commercial says. You're going to have to work out. You can believe that. You're going to work out. You're going to pick up some bars. Yeah. Amen. And I'm telling you, the, the, what you need to be picking up is your relationship with God and working that thing out in your life. Ooh. You need to be working it out. Amen. Work it as much as you can. Praise God. Praise God. Spend some time talking to the Lord. Listen, get in the habit of just waking up and greeting Him in the morning. What? Amen. 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 Indeed. Amen. Father, thank you. Lord Jesus, Ooh, thank you for sitting up. You still, I saw you still on the throne. Yes. That means my day is going to be great today. Hallelujah. Because mm -hmm. you're still on the throne. Praise mm -hmm. God. Right. Amen. So I want to encourage you with that. And uh, maybe I, I might hit a little bit more of that. Because, again, like I said, if you're going to have rest, you got to be walking with you. Thank you, Jesus. If you don't walk with the truth, you're not going to have rest. Mm. And so everything's going to be dependent upon what you see, what you feel, mm. what you think. Mm. And that's not a good way to live. Amen. Not for the believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the word this morning. And, and we just pray, Father, that uh, even as we, we, we go forth in our lives, Lord, we, that you would help us to have a deeper revelation of the truth. That Jesus is the truth. Not simply the possessor of truth, but he is the truth. Say that now. Father, we thank you for helping us understand that. And we thank you that as we go out into the world and through our week and through our day-to-day -day jobs, we thank you that you will help us to be mindful of the simple fact that as born-again believers, that Christ is with us. He never forsakes us. He never leaves us. And that, Father God, that we can walk in victory and we can walk in rest and peace because Jesus is with us. Glory. And we thank you, Father God, for this. And we praise you. And we just give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Birthday. We have birthday celebration. Yes. Yes. Whose birthday is it? Whose birthday?